Glad I heard him say it. Junior from Cincinnati, Ohio, number 34, John Miller. And at the other forward, a 6'2 senior from Convoy, Ohio, number 35, Brett Norris. The head coach for St. Francis in his 15th season is Jim Holstein. He is assisted by Tom Jackson. And now the starting lineup for your IPFW Mastodons. They come in nine and three overall. At one guard, a 5'10 sophomore from Greenwood, Indiana, number four, Jeff Smithy. At the other guard, a 6'1 senior from Fort Wayne, Indiana, number 32, Kevin Shank. Back at the IPFW Athletic Center, we've had the national anthem played. We gave you the Mastodon starting lineup very quickly for the St. Francis Cougars. Number 20, John Toder. Number 31, Bob Dissinger. Number 33, Larry Land. Number 34, John Miller. And number 35, Brett Norris. Charlie, we're about ready for action here tonight as we take on the crosstown rival St. Francis Cougars. Big game tonight, Dave. Uh, First of all, for the Mastodons, uh, took a hard loss on the chin uh, last Saturday um, from the Kentucky State Thoroughbreds. And this uh, St. Francis team always comes in, Dave. This is their tournament. Tonight is their tournament, playing against the Crosstown uh, rival Mastodons and also an NAIA team against a Division II NCAA team. Always a big game, a major game for them in their standings in terms of the NAIA program. That's right, it will be a tough ball game. And this is one of those where you can throw the records out the window. You really don't know uh, how things will, will shake down, but it's a big week for the Mastodons. St. Francis tonight, Tri-State Thursday night, and then back in the tough GLVC with Ashland, the number one team in the GLVC at the moment. St. Francis with the ball, taking the opening tip, down to an excellent uh, basketball player, number 35, Brett Norris. He's a senior veteran averaging about 21 points a game for the Cougars. And if the Dons continue to play that man-to-man, -man, that's a great matchup, uh, Clarence Rich on uh, Norris. Clarence plays very good defense. We go inside, and there's a first shot by the Mastodons. Is in by Mark Allen. 
Last game's Dandy Dolan, player of the game, earned a, start, a spot in the starting position tonight. Kind of too bad he didn't have just a little better shot to take right at the end of the game against Kentucky State because he had a good ball game. And again, he explained uh, in the interview after the game that the play was not designed for him. That's right. It just was funneled his way, and he ended up getting a fairly decent shot out of yeah. the whole deal. Yeah. St. Francis back with the action. Trying to drive the lane, keeping pretty much on the perimeter at the moment. First shot was put up by number 34, John Miller, and rebounded by the Mastodons quickly Mark down Allen the floor. Leaving off uh, right where he left off the other night, playing very well at the outset of the game. Clarence fires up a three-pointer. No good. Rebounded by number 34, John Miller. St. Francis now, now with the ball. Quick pass back inside. And he didn't get the kind of shot I think that he wanted there. He was surprised. He was pretty wide open. Jeff Smithy back for the Mastodons. I think uh, the Dons, uh, that it's kind of a zone. It's a trapping zone and kind of a, a matchup zone, actually. And it's kind of giving the uh, Cougars a little bit of problems there yeah. in the outset of this game. Mark Allen lost the handle there underneath. Ball came up to Scott Norris. Bob Bissinger with the ball, number 31 for St. Francis. And we have a foul whistled against Claren Rich. First foul of the ball game. He was kind of inadvertently pushed, I think, a little bit by Sean Gibson, yeah. his own teammate. He got tangled up with his own teammate, ended up going into the opponent player. So Bob Dissinger will be at the line to shoot two. Six, seven freshmen. First one is good. Dissinger is a Cincinnati, Ohio product. He's averaging right around nine points in a ball game. Pretty good year for a freshman so Not far. Not bad. And he hits the second. So we have a tie ball game, two to two. Just on over, under two minutes have been played. Mark Allen back up with a shot again. Missed the short jumper. Rebound by Todd Miller. Scott Norris likes to drive, and he's an excellent ball player. Nice drive to the hoop. Kevin Chang. Last game, Kevin was a lot more offensive minded than he's been, than he has been in the past. And uh, as it turns out, he's going to be the same way this game. And IPFW with their full court press cause a turnover on the part of the St. Francis Cougars, although they couldn't quite handle the free layup. They still have the ball underneath their own basket. Kevin Shank will inbound. The only thing that kept that from being an easy layup was a good hustle by the Cougars in getting back. Kevin Shank with the ball in the deep corner into Mark Allen. Mark, nice shot jumper, and he couldn't get it to fall. He's getting a, a good move. He won't ask for any better shot. And it's good to see him get into the offense early in the game. He's had three good shots already in the game, Dave. Dissinger again misfires for the Cougars. Ball out of bounds to the Mastodons. This is a game, Dave, that the Dons need to, they need a very impressive win to get over the shakes and the, some of the, uh, <laughs> I don't know, the aftershock of that yep. uh, loss on get Saturday back on evening. Track. St. Francis in a man-for-man -man defense at the moment. Again, the ball comes inside, and Mark Allen couldn't quite handle it. You see this matchup zone by the Dons, and a lot of times uh, it'll look exactly like a man-to-man. -man. And there we kind of got caught uh, with two men going out on a corner. Man left underneath. Brett Norris. Brett is a good ball player and won't miss that kind of an opportunity. Great body control off the bump by Sean Gibson. And that's what happens sometimes, Dave, in a matchup zone. Sometimes you, you get stuck guarding the area and you don't have a man, so you had two people running to an area that time and left a man underneath the basket. So we have our second tie of the ball game as Brett Norris misses the free throw. Dish underneath to Mark Allen, and Mark can't find the hoop. 
He dishes off though nicely to Sean Gibson who comes up with the basket underneath. Great exchange post to post action right there from uh, and good from defensive Allen hustle by Gibson. Kevin Shank. Great trap. That's the worst place. If you're an offensive player, Dave, that's the worst place that you want the ball. That way you have four defenders. You have the two IPFW players trapping. Then you have the half court line, which is also another defender, and the sideline. You're in a box, to say the least. 6 4. Just uh, over 16 minutes to play here in the first half. Clarence Rich with the ball. Clarence looking inside. Can't find the move. Gets it dished off to, to uh, Mark Allen. Mark's shot was blocked or a jump ball was called and alternate possession gives the ball to St. Francis. Now that time that was not a good opportunity for Mark Allen that time. He's had two or three very good opportunities but that in that case that is not a good opportunity for him. Probably should have dished it back outside in that one and uh, see if Clarence might be open for a jumper. Exactly. And on the drive we have a foul called against Mark Allen. That would be the third team foul against IPFW. Two shot foul. At the line will be number 31, Bob Dissinger. Now this is a surprise. Hanstrader coming in, not a surprise, but Land Bullard in the game is a surprise. I thought for sure we'd see him uh, last game, Dave, with the illnesses that the Macedons yeah. had. But tonight we see him on the court. And it's hard to tell. I haven't uh, had any report on how those who were fighting the flu bug Saturday night, how they're doing tonight, I really don't know. Uh, it looks like everybody at least is able to suit up. Sean had um, a, he had the stomach virus of uh, fruit poison, but he played Saturday night and played well. Shane Gibson, the same food poison, did not play at all. And I understand their mother had it too. Only their dad escaped, and he had some other uh, dish at the restaurant. <laughs> so I don't know where it was, but I don't want to go. <laughs> That's right. Six to four. St. Francis still has not been able to cash in on a free throw. Here they are setting up the offense. Looking to see if they can go inside. They're not much uh, looking much on the perimeter for shots. Everything is inside. And again on the defense, Clarence Rich gets a tie up with Todd Miller, John Miller, I'm sorry, number 34, and alternate possession to the Mastodons. The Dons may have caught a break that time, Dave. I think Clarence Rich uh, had a little bit of risk. John Honstrader tries the inside move and gets the good shot. They can't get one to fall on that inside. It's too close. Going to have to go out and take the three-pointer, I guess. Scott Norris, he didn't have to listen to me. No box out on the uh, defensive board. So number 20, John Tudor came up with the rebound and the basket, 6-6. Six to six. And again, sometimes it's very hard in a zone to find a player to box out. And I think that's what happened last time down. Nice offensive rebound. John Honstrider puts the ball back up and he gets fouled. So the first foul on the Cougars goes to 31. Two more substitutions coming in for the Mastodons. Number 10, Andre Walton. And number 25, Eric Vaughn. As Clarence Rich sets down, as does Jeff Smithy. And then we have a third substitution. So the entire starting lineup is now taking a rest for the Dons. As we see Doug Ranke, Doug was uh, saddled with the flu on Saturday, but played and played fairly well. Yeah. Played fairly well. First free throw is up and good by John Honstrader. Bet he'd like to have one of those Saturday night. <laughs> but that was Saturday night, and this is tonight, and we need it now. Second free throw, up and good. Full court pressure again exerted by the pre uh, Mastodons. The steal is made, and Andre Walton tipped it away. Land Bullard took the shot, no good. John Honstrader follows. This is a much quicker team on the floor right now, Dave, up front. They'll put a lot more pressure on as Eric Vaughn tips the ball from the back off of the St. Francis Cougar. Much to the chagrin of some of these St. Francis fans right below us, I would us, say Dave. so. Yeah. 
Eric Vaughn with the ball looking inside to Doug Granke. Doug gets the inside move, comes through, and he uses the ball off high off the glass and good. This team for the Mastodons, Dave, has the game moving at a little faster pace, which is what I think uh, the Dons need. And there we see good hustle on the side. John Hansrider went flying up into the crowd, tipped the ball loose. St. Francis having a little difficulty handling the ball now against the IPFW press. The trap comes out with Eric Vaughn coming out. Brett Norris with the ball, looking inside, nowhere to go, tries to drive the lane, does drive the lane. Excellent move. Good bucket by Brett Norris. He's a good ball player. Reminds me a lot of a player that the uh, Cougars had a few years back, uh, Matt Hicks. Yeah. Strong, moves the ball. Land Bullard get the ball tipped away from behind him. He got it right back and put it back up and got a nice roll. Stayed with it well. Very big game tonight for Land Bullard against a team like, like a St. Francis. Second time in a row down the court that the St. Francis has gotten the easy layup. Something that was a bit of a problem Saturday night against Kentucky State. John Hanstrider. John's going to be called on a push off. Probably a good call, Charlie, or at least it looks like from here he might have been able to clear himself. That's a, a bad push. That's a bad situation to be in. It's kind of a, an, an instinctive move. You automatically put the hand up to push off on the player when you when you have him out in front of you. As you see, there you go. And he, and he probably didn't do much of a push off. It's just in, instinctive in to automatically put that touch. hand up to hold that player off. Yeah. IPFW back with the pressure defense. Eric Vaughn strips the ball loose. And back we go the other way with Andre Walton in control. That's the second time Eric has done that tonight. Doug Ranke takes the long jumper. Andre was in the rebound. <laughs> that's the. <laughs> Did we have things reversed? Yeah, we had things reversed that time, and I think that play, that type of play, just might find uh, Granky a seat right next to Coach Andy Piazza. Long jumper by number 33, and again, St. Francis getting that offensive rebound. Mark Allen finally pulls it down. 14 to 10. 12 minutes and 15 seconds left in the first half. Eric Vaughn with a move to the basket, short jumper, and he hits. Pressure defense again. Mark Allen able to cut off the drive, but he couldn't get there quite fast enough. That's a good call. Mark's a little upset, but that, that is a good call. So it will be possession foul. Sean Gibson re-enters the Mastodon lineup. St. Francis with the ball inbounded to the corner, and now the trap is on, but he got out of it somehow. Eric Vaughn tips the ball loose. Andre Walton quickly down, pulls it back out. He had nowhere to go, and then he circles around and had, had the layup. He got a nice block from number 31, Bob Dissinger. St. Francis down with the short jumper, and they're rebounding. The white shirts can't get uh, close to the ball on the defensive boards, Charlie. Right now, they're getting a little uh, out hustle, especially on those. Uh, on their defensive end of the glass. And St. Francis doing a great job pounding the offensive glass. Doug Ranke trying to cut off the passing lane. It's called for an over the shoulder foul. One thing I've uh, said about uh, Doug Ranke all along, Dave, is that his main problem is that he doesn't get into playing position. General playing position doesn't bend over enough. He's not always ready to play. You have to be in playing position, hunched down. When he posts up on the offensive end, again, he stands too straight up and down, and that what happens to him on the defensive end, as we just saw. Pat Murphy is into the ballgame for the first time for the Mastodon tonight. Has the defensive assignment in the middle. Mm. 
Brett Norris missed the small one. Short jumper underneath. Long three-pointer by... Oh, there we go. Back up and Great in play. by Sean Gibson. Great play by Sean Gibson. So what started out as a possible three is still has the possibilities of three points. And for any young players out there watching, someone gets your arm, get the ball up on the glass. You never know what can happen. Like that shot, that's a one, one in 10 shot. But Sean was conscious enough to get the ball up on the glass, and that time he got the roll. And like you say, when you're in close, get it up on the glass. Let it bounce around on that iron, and it may fall through. Exactly. Sean Gibson at the line, the first free throw for the Mastodons. As they lead it, 18 to 10. I'm sorry, it's not the first one. First miss, because John Hanstrider had two that he hit earlier. So we're nearing the midpoint of the first half, and IPFW, a leader, 18 to 10 at the moment, but neither team real sharp. No, not right now. And a little bit of a lack of intensity right now. For a minute, for about a two-minute spell, the Dons, when they made those substitutions, they got it going a little bit. Now they've fell right back in there. I need right now they need to get some steals off the pressure and uh, get the ball up and down and get fast breaking a little bit to get them really into the flow of the game. And they're setting up their half court offense now and need to be able to maneuver something here. They're able to get the ball into whoever's playing the post. And uh, there's a three point jumper by Dwayne Shears. Dwayne Shears the best shooting form on the team by far. And again the pressure caused some difficulty for the Cougars as they threw the ball away. Threw it almost to us. Dave. That's right. <laughs> it was this direction. So with 10 minutes and five seconds to go here in the first half, IPFW with a 21 to 10 lead. Uh, hasn't been a real easy lead to come by. On the other hand, uh, hasn't been a real fast one either. The College Cable Access Program Guide provides information about our programming, including IPFW Sports Telecasts. To receive your free Channel 6 Program Guide, send your name, address, and zip code to College Cable Access Center at IPFW, 2101 Coliseum Boulevard East, Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46805-1499. Or call us at 481 Six five eight two. Please make your check out to the Indiana Purdue Foundation at Fort Wayne and designate it for College Cable Access Athletics. And you see on the screen a shot of Andy. P IPFW with the ball, setting up the offense. Pat Murphy loose underneath, and we have a foul on number fifty-four. Dan Clapter, a senior from Middletown, Ohio. Got his money's worth on that foul right there. Yeah, he did. Time. Pat was going to have a hard time getting off the floor, but he goes to the line to shoot two. First one is up and good. IPFW, I'm sure, disappointed in their free throw shooting last Saturday night, but off to a good start here tonight. Three out of four. Clearly the difference in that basketball game on the other evening, Dave. Well, that's true. And Pat hits the second one also. Full court pressure again exerted by the Mastodons. Kind of a nuisance pressure, hoping to cause St. Francis to rattle a little bit, throw the ball away, as they have done a few times so far. This game seems very slow paced, Dave, uh, as we see the foul on Pat Murphy there. The game seems slow paced, but the Dons have crept out to a 13 yeah. point lead. And they have kept uh, St. Francis from getting many offensive opportunities. But going to the line will be Dan Clafter, number 54, to shoot two for the Cougars. A physical bunch are these Cougars. Uh, already the Dons. Uh, in foul trouble in the standpoint that the Cougars are shooting one and one free throws. And there again we see uh, St. Francis out hustling the white shirts to come up with the rebound on the missed free throw. Not nearly enough talent to match up against the Dons but right now they're just matching them with uh, with just sheer determination. A 
foul down low there on Andre Walton. That's a case where things were not going so well for St. Francis, and then all of a sudden the ball appears to a man uh, that's in the lane. And they end up getting a foul out of it. May, actually, have, may have actually been in the lane too long, yeah. but he got it in the lane and nonetheless. <laughs> Actually got bailed out a little bit on that one by Andre Walton because Pat Murphy had the good block up high. Yeah. First one is missed by Dan Clafter. The big senior, 6'7, 210, Middletown, Ohio. Number 54 for the St. Francis Coop. Again, he misses the free throw and 35 almost pilfered that rebound away from my Mastodons again. Andre Walton with the drive to the basket drew the foul he'll get a chance to shoot two free throws Andre was bailed out Andre's very has a very strong upper body which allows him to hang in the air and put that body on his opponent and hang there and get the ball up draw the first draw the physical contact from the opponent and then get the ball up on the glass but after that it's very difficult for him to sometimes even get a shot off yeah because of his stature actually Clarence Rich and Kevin Shank back into the lineup. So we have Shears, Shank, Rich, Sean Gibson, and Pat Murphy. The five for the Dons on the floor at the moment. And Andre's first free throw bounces around all sides of the rim and then falls off. Number two coming to Andre. Andre has been used uh, primarily, Dave, uh, to push the ball up and to create some defensive pressure on the other team's offensive guards and to give this team a spark. Second free throw was good. Yeah, because there he is on the front end of the press. Good defense that time. Everybody dropped back, picked up the ball and the open man. So St. Francis forced to set up on their offense. So far kept to the outside on the perimeter. Brett Norris pass inside to Toter back out to Norris inside to number 34 John Miller missed the short jumper and here come the Dons Andre Moulton quickly down the floor Pat Murphy out front with a short jumper no good rebounds his own shot goes back up no good he's after it again can't come out. Oh, he's good hustle. Good hustle. He lost the ball out of bounds, but you can't knock the hustle. Great hustle by Pat Murphy. And that's what Pat Murphy will bring you into the uh, into the basketball game. Great physical play, great hustle, and he will use all five of those fouls that he's allotted that's at the right. beginning of the game. Andre Walton again exerting pressure on the ball. Over to John Miller, back to Brett Norris. Larry Land, number 33. And in the corner, Bob Bissinger. Back to Land. Toter with the ball outside. Doesn't want to take that jumper. Likes to drive inside where he has a hard time getting it up through the big boys. Yeah, I think Pat Murphy got a hand on it that time. And Andre Walton pushing the ball as usual. Three-pointer on the way. No good. Rebounded that time, followed by Kevin Shank. Good hustle by Kevin. Which is what Kevin brings you to the game. Great hustle. The intangibles. He'll go after that ball wherever it is. Sean Gibson in the deep corner inside to Pat Murphy. Pat with a nice move inside and gets the ball off the glass for two. St. Francis has been stuck on that number 10, Charlie, for a long time. It's not that they haven't had some opportunities. Free throws inside the lane. Here we go down the lane again. Another short one. Now they get off it. I guess I should have been quiet. Spoke too soon. 26 to 12, IPFW in the lead. Seven minutes and five seconds to be played here in the first half. Non-conference men's basketball. Little break in the conference action, GLVC for the Mastodons tonight and Thursday night. This is for city bragging rights. That's right. Sean Gibson with a nice move inside. Good steal by Kevin Shank and a pass ahead to Clarence Rich, who's up and in on the layup. Great play by Shank that time. He knew he had two very quick uh, offensive players out in front. He just lofted it out there and let whoever got to it first get it. Good strong move to the hoop that time by Brett Norris. Andre Walton down quickly through the middle, puts it up. 
and gets a nice roll for a layup. IPFW kind of cutting them the pieces at the moment down the lane with the, the layups. Here we have nice move, defensive move, cut off the lane by Sean Gibson, blocked the shot, and got the ball. Great position. Clarence Rich with the ball on the far right side of the court, inside to Sean Gibson. Sean, his little turnaround move, nice soft jumper. Sean playing well. Yes, he's back. Uh, he's in sync tonight. And back into the starting lineup. And I think that uh, has a lot to do with the psyche of Sean Gibson as he uh, prepares mentally at the beginning of the games. Well, and he's one they need to have playing well enough to be a starter. He's a stalwart on the rebounding and always a good contributor on the scoring. Pat Murphy inside, soft jumper, no good. And another great attribute that he has, he has leadership. Yeah. Good leadership qualities in Sean Gibson. He's a big, strong kid. St. Francis on the attack. Larry Land with the ball in the far corner. Oh, the big center takes this jumper outside. And there we see the talents of Brett Norris once again. Offensive rebound, strong enough to use the body to draw the foul and still get the, the ball up on the board. The two Macedons hanging all over him. Yeah. Multiple substitutions for the Dons. Kevin Shank stays in. Jeff Smithy joins him. Mark Allen, John Honstrider. Clarence Rich stays in. With this lineup in the game, you won't see the pushing up and down that the Macedons do when you have an uh, Andre Walton in the game. More control, but better shooting uh, from uh, Jeff Smithy. If I'm not mistaken, Charlie, St. Francis has missed every free throw opportunity that they've taken tonight, which has been several. Yeah. Six or seven, maybe. <laughs> Tough foul to see on that one. Don't know. Uh, wasn't a drastic push off. Maybe there was a little contact. Let's see what Mark gets this time as he. Well. I think he did have the hands in the small of the back of the Cougar player. The hands were there, and the angle of the official could see just that. So. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, Dave, on the comment earlier, I think Dissinger did uh, nail two free throws early in the game. Did he? Yes, he did. Okay. John Mahuron, number 25 in the Cougar lineup, and he gets a free throw to fall. But they have so shot poorly. 34 17, 441 left in the first half. Mahuron's second foul shot, also good. Doug Ranke in the post has a big man on him. He ought to go ahead and go up. Clarence Rich with a three-pointer, and it's good. And we hadn't mentioned it before, but this is probably a good time. 31 games in a row. Charlie, the streak. The it's streak long enough now there. you just say the streak. And we have an offensive foul called this time against Brett Norris as Doug Ranke stood in and took the charge. That's a That's good play. Hurt. A good play for Doug, but uh, he was uh, moving just a little bit. You know, I've heard some officials talk, though, and they say that there can be some movement in that defender. It's not like he has to be absolutely still. He just has to have the position clearly established ahead of the offensive player. That could have been the situation in that yeah. particular case. Clarence again for three, and again. Purely a set shooter. If he has time to set his feet and get where he needs to be, he's a very adept three-point shooter. And Clarence is one of those that uh, he's second on the team with 23 three-pointers going into tonight's game. Line for the lead tonight with two already. Land Bullard getting ready to check in for the Dons. I never know what happens in a basketball practice, but something obviously has to be happening for a young man like Land Bullard to not see any minutes on Saturday night, the one of the first players off the IPFW bench tonight. 
and has played a fair, a pretty good uh, floor game thus far, and it has one bucket already. He probably came to practice very hungry Sunday or Monday whenever they had their first practice after the weekend games. And that's what you have to do, Dave. Uh, what you do in practice is what you do in the games. If you play hard in practice, you have to play hard in the games, and coaches see that, and they do know that. And what they're after are those guys that play hard day in and day out. We'll have an over and back call as the ball was bounced off of Jeff Smithy. Not a real smooth handoff. Handoffs like that in the Super Bowl this Sunday will cause that <laughs> team a little trouble. Especially if it's a close game. That's right. Like that field goal last year. Mike Bowen, number 15, a new entry into the St. Francis lineup. Kevin Shank with the steal off to Jeff Smithy. Jeff puts the layup on the board and good and drew a foul. Be interesting to see if this is called after the uh, basket. Actually, a great step into the lane right there, as you see by Kevin Shank, pass to Jeff Smithy. Actually, Smithy just kind of put the ball up there. Yeah. But again, high on the glass, gave it a chance to fall in. You got to do that, Get, and you give your other players a chance to rebound if it does happen uh, not to go in the basket. So Jeff with a free throw gets the shooter's roll. Three-point play for the Mastodons. Again, they exert the full court pressure. Cougars not as much trouble uh, breaking the press as they did have when Vaughn, uh, when Vaughn Rich, Vaughn Rich and Walton were in the game. As you see a foul right there by Land Bullard. An inadvertent trip as Joe Mahuron went to the deck. And hit the deck pretty hard. The best thing right now, Dave, for a Bullard to do, he's getting playing time right now. The best thing he had that he can do is leave it all out on the floor. Yep. Don't save anything for tomorrow. There may not be a tomorrow. And in the case of Bullard, there hasn't been too many yesterday. That's right. So he has to play right hard, very hard right now, leave it all on the floor. Joe Mahuron hits the first free throw and is ready for number two. And it's good. Good looking free throw shooter, this Mahuron. Yeah, after some difficulties earlier in the half, now the last uh, four or five or so for the Cougars have gone very well. Little inside-out game with Jeff Smithy and Doug Ranke. You saw a move right there by Ranke. He has to be prepared. Three-point shot on its way by uh, Smithy is off the iron and out of bounds. Alluding back to Ranke, he's not much of a threat when he's standing straight up and down. A defensive player knows that well, he's probably not going to make a strong move to the basket if he's standing straight up and down. If he gets more into playing position, I can't say enough. He has to be ready, knelt down into a position where he can feel that defensive player. Yeah, there are, there are times when uh, he at least needs to take a glance toward the basket so that the defender will have that feeling that, hey, if he could, he would. Exactly. He has to be more of a threat. Pressure again by the Mastodons. Cougars then are satisfied to take a set up on the offensive board. We get a nice dish from Brett Norris into number 54, Dan Glaffner. Good defense that time by Bullard and good help yep. by um, Sean Gibson. Just a good pass and a good basket. There's the ball inside to Ranky, and he did look to the to the basket. Took the shot and drew the foul. A little better move that time. Yep. He must be listening to me up here. Doug will shoot two. Two minutes and 26 seconds showing on the clock till halftime. Ranky's first free throw is good. He'll go for number two. And you see Coach Piazza giving uh, instructions, defensive instructions to Andre Walton. Second free throw by Ranky, also good. A little different look that time on the pressure by the Dons. That time Walton was playing more of a center field uh, defense instead of a shortstop when he's all in the man's face. A 
double block right there by Gibson and Land Bullard. I don't know who the stat keeper is going to give that block to. Maybe a, a half block for each one. That looks like it would be fair. <laughs> Not the typical IPFW St. Francis basketball game, Charlie. It's, uh, it's been one of those where the Mastodons have just very quietly gone about uh, their business and gotten the job done. Usually the pace is very hectic and uh, a lot of intensity. Out there tonight doesn't seem to be as much intensity as I'm sure either coach would like to see. Well, not a lot of emotion. That's why it's been a kind of quietly going about uh, their business. Well, we'll see if Shane has gotten some of his strength back from fighting the flu bug. His first appearance uh, tonight. Did not see any action on Saturday night. First free throw is up and good by Joe Mahiran. Have to keep this guy off the line. Middle of the lower section across the court from us, Charlie. We see the fraternity boys having a good time again tonight. They've kind of added a little spark to this crowd in here the last exactly. five or six games. Between the fraternity guys and the volleyball guys, they're going to turn yes. this place. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jumper by Dwayne Shears is off the mark. Rebounded by number 15, Mike Bowen. Quick pass down to Brett Norris. Brett trying to go to the middle of the lane, but can't get loose, although inside. And the first block was made. The second, the ball came back to a blue shirt, and the yeah. blue shirts had the inside position. I don't think Coach Piazza will will be happy about that. There's the first block, a, a double block by the Gibson boys, and then a foul over the back by um, Dwayne Shears. Dwayne wasn't aware of where this number 33 was behind him. Lands free throw he is good. 45 to 28, minute and a half to go in the half. Cougars quietly sneaking back in there and cutting that lead down from uh, about 21 to 17. Andre Walton rebound, back up, no good. Sean Gibson tried for the rebound, but he was behind the man. Cougars do get good rebound position, Charlie. They may not be big. But they get good position. They've always been that type of scrappy team ever since I can remember. The team always good defensive position, and which a good defensive position would give you a good rebounding position. Nice block that time by Shane Gibson. Dwayne Shear quickly down the floor. Looks back out to Sean Gibson. Over to Shane. Mastodons look at the clock, set up their half court offense which they've been pretty effective with tonight by being able to get uh, a good inside close in jump shot. I think uh, Shane Gibson Dave is a little sluggish still from his uh, illness from Saturday uh, evening. Does look like it doesn't he? a little weak needs to get that strength back. Short jumper by Dwayne Shears no good again Andre Walton comes up with a loose ball kicks back out to Dwayne Shears this time the jumper is good just before the buzzer. So as time runs out here in the first half at the IPFW Athletic Center we see the IPFW Mastodons leaving the floor with a 47 to 28 lead over the crosstown rival St. Francis Cougars. A fairly uneventful first half Dave but again the Dons do have a sizable 47 to 28 lead and it has to be encouraging from one standpoint but I'm sure coach Piazza would like to see more intensity from his uh, Mastodon team. Well they have to be encouraged by by the fact that they were able to come out they've played uh, everybody on the roster they've all contributed. You see the score halftime score on your screen we will be back in a minute and share with you the program explore the possibilities. Mathematics is all in books. 
books you left behind in high school. It's time to think again. There's a new and vital mathematics in the world today, and it's at work in every area of our lives. It enables us to manage more effectively with better routes, efficient schedules, and economical use of resources. It gives us control over the quality of our products and confidence in new ways to care for our children. It helps us understand the patterns and shapes of geometry as they occur in nature and in art. It makes possible every one of the amazingly diverse things that computers do. It helps us find fair ways to make group decisions and holds out hope for new ways to resolve conflict. Find out how the practical side of today's mathematics is affecting your life. Watch for all practical purposes. Lies beget lies. God, you sound like mother. Well, she happens to be right. Lying is a vicious circle and there's no way out except to tell the One out of every five people who try cocaine get hooked. But that's not your problem. <laughs> or is it? challenging. There's really a, a good quality work here. The campus in the fall, I think, is really nice. It's a nice place to sit out and relax, maybe during a lunch hour or any time after classes. There's a lot here that IPFW has to offer. The professors really concentrate on helping you. They've enabled me to grow professionally. If you're gonna go in Indiana, this, this would be the place to go and people just don't realize that because they think it's hometown. Many of the professors here at IPFW have gained both national and international recognition uh, through their teachings. I know a lot of people say that if you go to a small campus that you won't be able to find a good job, but I've been interviewed with General Motors and they chose myself and another girl from IPFW and that gives me great confidence in this school. Welcome to the weather report. The skies are going to be clear, the temps are going to be nice. Let's take a look at tomorrow, we can see how the system moves. And I think that what IPFW has to offer is really fantastic. We are very fortunate at IPFW to have a music therapy program. We have a career service area that um, finds employment for students sometimes career related while they're in school and after they graduate and uh, after they become alumni. We uh, have multicultural services, special services for um, African American students, for Hispanic students. We have child care available. We have a women and returning adult center for our large uh, returning adult student population. I get to meet a lot of diverse people. I mean, coming to this lounge, I met you guys. I met, I know basically, I know everybody in this lounge. I could say Chinese, Japanese, Korean. The Office of Multicultural Services provides personal counseling, academic counseling, and also cultural heritage programs primarily geared for African American students and Hispanic students, and also any other student on the IPFW campus who would like to take advantage of our services. We have given over 26,000 degrees, uh, and our alumni 
have are literally all over the world uh, in successful and important positions in business industry. perspective today with our concern with the environment. Which is better? We had some kind of patent infringement case. We thought somebody was infringing upon our patent. Mm -hmm. Temperature, stagnation, temperature corresponding to triple value, you could determine the stagnation property. In other words, what you are going to do, you are going to pretend that you decelerated the flow from whatever it was to, to this point. I never gave you art. <laughs> My honored lord. Just take it in like this. How do I care for this child? And that transition from what's taught in the classroom to what is actual reality of putting it into practice and, and hands-on doing procedures. Okay, how would I decide now, for example, how big a drop of water was? The way it was conducted in the district court, they said, was a summary judgment. It left two unresolved issues of fact. What were those? Somebody tell me. Would you check to see if I if there's any prerequisites for urban anthropology? Okay, that's E380. The honors program offers courses for talented and motivated students who graduate in the upper 10% of their high school classes and have above average SAT scores. These are small enrollment classes taught by selected faculty members. I had a favorite professor that was very knowledgeable. I know he knew a lot about his field, and it really helped me to understand through personal stories he had. We try to know as many students as we possibly can by their first name, and really develop long-term relationships over the four years that they are here, and even beyond. A student that would be interested in attending IPFW would have a full range of companies to consider at the time of graduation. Yeah, I just accepted a job in uh, Denver, Colorado with uh, one of the largest big six firms, a public accounting firm. Recent recruiters here include IBM, Xerox. The professors here really helped me through my interview process. I knew I wanted to relocate. Not only the local companies are involved recruiting the students, but companies throughout the United States. Help me land one of, one of the most desired jobs in America. I myself and many people I know also work while going to school. Over 90% of our students are employed. Although I live outside of Fort Wayne, it's still real close and convenient for me to come to school and then directly to work. It only takes me about approximately 15 minutes. We also have co-op, and the co-op program is an alternating program whereby the student goes to school for a semester and then works for a semester. But the marvelous thing about it is that you are 80% guaranteed of employment upon graduation. The Financial Aid Office at IPFW assists students in financing their educational expenses through a combination of scholarships, grants, educational loans, and student employment. These aid programs come from federal, state, institutional, and private resources. about my major for a while now, but they really helped me a lot. Helped me to discover new careers and check into them, get ideas on them. I really appreciate that. They've really done a lot for me in that aspect. I think IPFW is an exciting place to be. And it's exciting because we have such a wide variety of students. I think we have appeal for many students. We offer a quality education. Our student body ranges in age from 13 to 82, uh, and we can offer quality and variety. Since 1964, more than 26,000 students have received Indiana or Purdue degrees on this campus. We are very proud of every one of them 
The possibilities are endless. The opportunities are here for you. Will you come and look at the opportunities and explore the possibilities and become a part of Indiana Purdue at Fort Wayne. Welcome back to the IPFW Athletic Center as we are approaching the start of the second half of this men's basketball game between the IPFW Mastodons and the St. Francis Cougars. Two minutes till the tip off of the second half. Again, the first half score, IPFW leading the Cougars 47 to 28. Charlie, some impressions of the first half? Well, again, fairly uneventful, uh, as we see the halftime statistics uh, on the screen there. The Mastodons, I think, doing well with the lead that they have, but I just haven't, I've seen a lack of intensity from them, and that could be from, they haven't had enough fight from the Cougars uh, could across be a possibility. town. Um, shooting 47% from the field, not bad. Um, the Cougars from St. Francis, only 31%. 0 for 1 from three-point land. The Don's 3 for 8. Always their strong suit. They always pick up extra points on teams from that area. And again, tonight, no difference uh, than in the past. 80% from the line, shooting well. But uh, as you stated earlier, uh, whereas you thought they had missed all of their free throws, and they had made two, but 10 for 18 is not very good from the uh, foul strike. No, they had their difficulties there. Assists. Again, uh, you stated earlier that not really looking uh, to pass the ball. They're just uh, going for some of the outside shots and inside shots off some of their rebounding. So I expect to see, as we see, 24 to 24 on the rebounds, playing well. Assists, the Dons have 10 assists, passing the ball well. Only three for the Cougars. 13 turnovers, big turning point in the game with only five for the Dons. 10 steals for the Macedons, only two. That pressure giving the um, Cougars all kinds of trouble early in the game. Team fouls the Dons with the pressure and the great offensive rebounding by the Cougars, resulting in 14 uh, team fouls by the Dons and only seven on the Cougars. Block shots even at three apiece. Of all those numbers, Charlie, probably two that are most impressive would be the five turnovers that IPFW has had. That's a pretty low total for a half with fast paced as they played. Exactly. If, the other if figure you can, that uh, I see that would be impressive would be St. Francis has 24 rebounds. Mm -hmm. We need to get them off the boards just a little bit and uh, slow that down. Mainly the offensive boards. Right. Because they have gotten a lot of their points off the offensive boards going to the free throw line and in some cases going to the free throw line with a chance to finish off a three point play. Well, it's tip off time as the young boys get the practice shooting balls off the floor and get things ready to go by alternating possessions. The ball will be go over to St. Francis Cougars and there we see on the screen one of our 
Mastodon Lady basketball players. Michelle Connolly, they will be in action, I think, Thursday night on the road in Indianapolis. Playing well, a couple of big wins. The Cougars this half, Dave, they have to get something going. I'm not sure if they're the type of team that can, that can make a comeback from this kind of deficit against a team like an IPFW. Well, let's hope uh, maybe that they're not able to, but on the other hand, uh, they need to, to play a good steady basketball game the second half, and that's not a bad start. They get the easy layup inside, draw the foul, don't hit the shot. Jeff Smithy, I think, drew the foul or is called for the foul. And to the line, John Toder, number 20 for the Cougars, and he gets a nice shooter's roll. Hits the first free throw. Number two will be on the way. I think it looks like game starters for both teams uh, back in the game to start the second half. Larry Land giving a little pressure to the ball as Jeff Smithy brings it down. Clarence Rich on the outside. St. Francis may have picked up the defensive intensity a notch or two here. Nice move down the lane. Jeff Smithy couldn't get the shot to fall. And again, St. Francis with a rebound. Well, that's what they have to do, Dave. They have to pick up the game. They have to uh, make up these 19 points from somewhere. And uh, you have to do it on a defensive end. And we see an Intentional foul, I believe. A little bit of a push. Yeah. Didn't look much like an intentional foul to me, though. Just a little contact there. But it may be the kind of thing that the official has seen enough bumping going on that he doesn't want it to get out of hand. Yeah, we don't know what kind of talking is going on down there. Clarence Rich steps to the line, misses the first free throw. He'll have the second on the intensity. More knees that time. Rich, as I forgot to tell you, Dave, that's what he wants to be referred to as just rich. rich. Just nothing, just rich. She rich. Just rich. Just rich. Just rich. All right. <laughs> second free throw was good. And IPFW will inbound the ball back at the spot closest to where the intentional foul took place. Jeff Smithy bringing it down 48 to 30 just into the second half. Kevin Shank with a nice cut down the middle but the ball picked off by Brett Norris and here come the Cougars. Kevin felt like he got fouled that time. Nice defensive play by Mark Allen tipped the ball away. Kevin Chank <laughs> thought he had a foul that time, was a little disappointed, picked the ball right out of the air before Sean Gibson was ready to put it right back up into the hoop. And actually, Kevin just kept going with the ball. He could have caught it and kept it in play, but he just he was so disgusted yeah. by the fact that he thought he had gotten fouled, he just went out of bounds with it. Cougars on the perimeter with their offense in the half court. Brett Norris steps out to take the ball. Kevin Shank and Sean Gibson are still battling each other <laughs> for the ball this time on the defensive end of the floor. Dave, but Sean does a great job of putting defensive pressure on those close in shots without making the foul. Yeah, because John Miller had the ball inside that time and thought twice about trying to take his shot. Good defensive play by Rich. Stripped the ball cleanly. Well, there might have been an extra step in there, but uh, it was awfully quick, and they were just little ones. A couple of baby steps, I think, Dave. Great finish and a great pass by Mark Allen. Mastodon stretch it back to a 20-point lead momentarily. Then we have the bucket by Larry Land. Land a pretty good looking left handed ball player. Mark Allen with the ball inside puts up the short jumper and hits this time. Same kind of shot he had a little trouble getting to fall in the first half. He made that first one and then missed about three in a row. Good to see him hit his first one this half. 
Rich with another steal. Jeff Smithy goes in for the layup, draws the foul on Brett Norris. St. Francis fans wanting an offensive charge that time on Clarence Rich after he stole the ball and went ran right into one of the uh, St. Francis players, but incidental contact right there, great behind the back pass to Smithy. Yeah. Pretty good body control actually uh, by Rich because he didn't really just plow over the man and he fell over and maybe it was a good acting job. Again, yes. yeah, the plow over would have definitely resulted in an uh, offensive foul, but yeah. good body control as you stated by Rich. First free throw is good by Jeff Smithy. He will eye number two. And it's good. The Cougars break the press pretty easily that time. Great break of the press that time. And on the defensive side, you got to expect some of those. You, you can't stop them every time. That, that's going to happen sometimes. Drive down the baseline by Rich. Draws the foul again on number 20, John Toter. Toter uh, in disbelief. He thought it was a clean block. And uh, he may have a point in watching the replay just then. Eric Vaughn into the lineup for Kevin Chang. First free throw is good. Number two will be forthcoming. And it's good. Clarence playing well tonight. And the Mastodon shooting free throws pretty well. Excuse me, Rich playing well tonight. Fake on the three point jumper. Step inside, no good on the two point jumper. Quickly down the floor. Underneath to Eric Vaughn. Mark Allen drives the lane, puts it up left handed. Good move by Mark Allen. Strong move, major league move that time by Mark Allen. St. Francis fans would like a foul to have been called that time as Mark Allen went to the sideline and a chance to steal. <laughs> Eric Vaughn went for the steal, missed it, and his man consequently got a nice, easy, short jumper. That time Vaughn gambled and lost. Foul this time on St. Francis number 33, Larry Land. Here we see the replay of the ball. Land put the body on him, pushed him out from his drive down the lane. Usually the crowds of these two teams usually more excited. Usually St. Francis bring a, a large crowd with yeah. them. Then in turn, that gets the IPFW crowd turned on. Again, for bragging rights in the city. Yeah, there's usually a pretty good number of students here from St. Francis. And not the typical not the typical St. Francis IPFW game in numbers uh, in the stands and also in uh, competition on the floor. Those fans might be pretty knowledgeable and had anticipated that it wouldn't be all that <laughs> close a ball game. Nice short jumper gets the roll. Sean Gibson. Good inside move. Full court pressure exerted by the Dons. Cross court pass gets a nice wide open layup that was missed and then they block shot by Sean Gibson but draws the foul as Brett Norris attempted to put it the shot It was a good up. block up high by Gibson. Again, if we'll see on the replay here, you'll probably see Hans to get him down low. Good block first time, Hans Wait a minute, I don't know if I saw that. <laughs> good block up high by Hans the first time, then looked like a good block up high by uh, Gibson the second time, but in live action, it did look like Hans got him a little bit down low. Well, that's one of those, Charlie, that you don't have to see it because the official called it. A lot of, yeah, a lot of time <laughs> that, and it could have been one of those anticipated. Yeah. That's uh, too close to the action to not be a foul sometimes, and the official will go ahead and call the foul whether there's actually any contact or not. Good look at Brett Norris, who hit the first three throw and attempts the second. It's also good. 60 to 38 to score, just under 16 minutes of play left here at the IPFW Athletic Center as Dwayne Shear took the 
three-point attempt. Eric Vaughn rebounded, put it back up, but it was tipped short. And ball cleared by Brent Norris. IPFW defense has pushed St. Francis all on the one side of the floor for the moment. Brett Morris makes the do and a nice little spin shot that found its way to the net. Great move that time by Norris. And there we see a great feed from Andre Walton down to Dwayne Shears breaking toward the basket and getting an easy layup. Picture perfect screaming eagle fast break just like you run it in practice. Yep. Andre laid the ball out there like a quarterback. Let that tight end catch it and score the touchdown. Dwayne Shear squared up for the jumper. Fed it inside. A little too briskly, hard to handle. A little bit too much passing. First, Eric Vaughn had a pretty good um, shot at the basket, and he passed the shot up to uh, Dwayne Shears, who also had a good shot at the basket, and a little bit too much passing down low. It should have been a bounce pass, actually, yeah. anyway. So that he could have had a good opportunity to try to handle it. But that's unselfish play, and you can't right. fault that. And with this kind of lead in the game, that's kind of what you're looking for. Andre Walton out quickly on a feed from nice feed from Eric Walton over to Pat Murphy who puts the ball and number 54 <laughs> from St. Francis up in the air. That was a public display of Pat Murphy's strength right, right then. The man was hanging all over here. You'll see it. Still enough strength to get the ball up yeah. on the glass and a shot at a three point play but he missed a shot so he'll be shooting two free throws right here. So Pat will go to the line for two. With Norris out of the game, Dave, I don't know where the scoring punch is going to come for St. Francis, but he's played just about the whole game, and I'm sure he needs a blow. But this St. Francis team does not have the firepower to get back into the basketball game, and at this point, they need to do something to try to get back in it. As Pat Murphy misses the first free throw, there's a good look at uh, Brett Norris. Very good basketball player. And Pat <laughs> throws up an air ball at the free throw. <laughs> well, that kind of happens, Dave. When you had a, try to get a layup with a guy hanging all over you, you kind of get out of sync at the free throw line. Trying to save you there, Pat. Pat, Pat had that sheepish look on his face as though I didn't really do that, did I? Quick court, cross court pass. And the freshman center tried to get the ball up, but he was surrounded by the defense. Bob Dissinger couldn't get the ball up. There we see the pass inside to Pat Murphy. Pat was wide open to begin with. Moved into the traffic. Dwayne Shears drives the lane. Eric Vaughn hasn't had a chance to cut loose with that NBA three-point attempt <laughs> yet tonight. He's looking for it, believe me. He Dave. was looking that time. Andre gets the offense set up for the half court. No one's looking at the moment. Pat Murphy, nice move in and off the glass. Short jumper. Good, Good move. spin move. Great spin move that time down low by Murph. RPFW on another steal. Andre Walton pushes the ball inside and rebounded by John Honstrader up and in. Andre Dave that time got caught in no man's land in between the shot and the pass. And at the last moment, he decided, well, I'm in there. I better shoot it. And he didn't really want to. This press right now giving uh, the Cougars a lot of trouble. And difficulty getting their shot to fall inside. And Clapton, number 54, coming out of the lineup for the Cougars. He's tired. Replaced by number 34, John Miller. Ball in backcourt to Mike Bowen over to Larry Land. Shot goes up. No good. IPFW on the rebound. And the quick move up court. Eric Vaughn moving to the basket. Three point attempt in the air by Jeff Smithy and good. 
Well, it's easy to see, Dave. This, this Cougar team does not have a bona fide three-point shooter on their team. No, they haven't taken a, a long jumper. That's about as long a jump shot as they've taken tonight. Just saw Mohiran take one, and, and just from the form and the way it dented at the glass, he's not a three-point shooter. That's right. Last time down the floor for the Mastodon, too, was a good example of uh, Eric Vaughn driving the lane, pulling the defense in, he kicks it out to the side, and a wide-open three-point attempt for Jeff Smithy. Land Bullard drives to the basket. Actually got uh, hacked on the arm, but no call. The big center tries the outside jumper. John Honstrider called on push the push off. Maybe a good call on the replay. <laughs> right now, uh, Dave, a teaching, this is a teaching point for both teams. The Dons, Coach Andy Piazza gets a chance to look at some players like Land, Bullard, some of the other players on the bench to see what combinations may work getting, uh, as he prepares for more conference play and they compete for the conference title. Again, St. Francis, they have to just try to make this a learning experience. Yeah, and their players, their starters, and their, their better ball players have to try to execute against a pretty good team so that as they meet stiff competition at the end of their season, they'll be ready. Yeah, this will definitely be one of the better teams that they've faced throughout the year. Again, they try the long jumper and don't even draw iron. <laughs> so they don't have a perimeter game. Eric Vaughn drives the lane and lays it up and in. Great move by Eric that time. I thought he was going to make the dish over the head. But the defense didn't totally cut him off, so he took it right on up to the hoop. Good decision. Just take whatever the defense gives you. Another air ball thrown up. Well, not air ball, but a short jumper. Doug Ranke tied up by number 34, John Miller, on the alternate possession. The ball will go to, I believe, IPFW. Brett Norris back in the lineup for the Cougars. And as you had indicated before, Charlie, their best offensive threat. Mm -hmm. A few fans here that did come with St. Francis, they were all over the referees. I just think the Cougars are just coming up short in the jump shots. I don't think they're being fouled. It gets very frustrating when you're down about 30 points. Then uh, you're going to ask for any call you can get. <laughs> exactly. Great Ball. block that time. Out of bounds uh, by uh, Norris. When you make a block, for all you, again, all you young people out there making blocks, try to keep the play in bounds so that your players can't start a fast break. Nice blind pass from Eric Vaughn over to... Doug Ranke, Doug had no choice but to catch it. Exactly. And then he put it back up into the glass for a good bucket and drew the foul. Doug clearly not ready for this pass as we see. And that's exactly what you do with the big man. Throw it up in his face. If you throw the ball at his face, he'll put his hands up there. He's got to catch it. Free throw is good by Doug Ranke. 74 to 42 at the 10.55 mark of the second half. Men's basketball, Fort Wayne, Indiana, inner city rivalry here. St. Francis College, Indiana, Purdue, Fort Wayne. Nice move by the big freshman center, Bob Dissinger. Dissinger went Cougars. in, he wanted to punch that ball in. He still got the bucket, but not with the authority that he wanted. Three point uh, jumper on its way by. Good hustle by Pat Murphy to try to keep that ball alive. Kept St. Francis from getting out on a quick fast break, and Jeff Smithy breaks it up, but he uses a foot to do it. Eric Vaughn, Dave, has great hands on the upswing, tipping the ball away from opponents, and that's what you have to do. If you're going to swing at the ball, swing up. Sometimes Eric does get caught with his hands in the cookie jar. Just as IPFW got caught asleep on the defense that time with an easy two-point right in front of the hoop on the inbounds by uh, St. Francis. Number 34, Miller. Again, a nice feed from Eric Vaughn to Pat Murphy. We're at the halfway point of the second half. And 
Eric Vaughn a little over anxious at half court trying to steal the ball and draws the foul. This is the kind of game that an Eric Vaughn loves. You get to put his uh, passing talents and shooting talents on public display for the people in a game. He can try some things in a game like this that on a, in a closer game he would not be able to do. Right. You see a series of substitutions getting ready to enter for IPFW. Good hustle down court that time by the Cougars. Bob Dissinger, the big freshman center, is a, a good, hard-working kid, and he's going to be a good one before he's through at St. Francis. It's a shame that he's not uh, a little more developed and mature right now. A him teamed with a Norris would make a good combination, as we uh, discussed a little earlier. They usually do have a big man, a pretty good, formidable big, big man in the middle. Hook shot. Tough to stop. Nice move by Doug. He's looked well on that hook shot the last few games. Well, if he keeps perfecting it, that could be a very dangerous weapon for the Mastodons. Good hustle that time by Shane Gibson. And Rich, <laughs> number 33 for the IPFW Mastodons. Norris having all kinds of troubles tonight, Dave. I don't think he's used to night in and night out playing against big players of the abilities of a Sean Gibson, Doug Ranke, John Hanstrider, and the likes. And the trapping defense also has given him considerable amount of difficulty. Inside out game being played by Doug Ranke. Again, he goes with the hook shot, and again, he scores. That's a good play, but against big defenders in the GLVC, uh, Doug may not be able to get that off. Again, he has to get more aggressive, more ready to play in playing position, triple threat position. Mike Bowen with the ball for the Cougars. Inside pass. Shot no good, and here come the Mastodons. Doug Granke with a quick move down the middle. Again, there might have been an extra step. Taken. But that's the type of aggressive move that I love to yeah. see Doug Ranke yeah. make. There we saw the replay of the foul. I think a good call. <laughs> Doug uh, bowled over the um, St. Francis defender and then gave him a little elbow just to boot. You have to say that the defender is certainly traveling at his own risk when he stands in the lane like that to take that kind of a charge. Good aggressive play, though, by ranking. Yep, he went to the hoop. And there he was aggressive on the defense. Now he's going to lead the ball down the floor. Well, everything coming up short on those shots. On Andre Walton's drive down the uh, lane that time, I would love to see a pass to Ranky. There we saw Doug Ranke block the shot, and the foul was called on Rich. Any young point guards out there, after we watch the replay here, any young point guard out there, when your big man blocks a shot, gets out, and fills the lane like Doug Ranke just did, you have to reward him for playing defense and plus filling the lane. All you young point guards, if you don't do that, your big man may not play for you. Charlie, I was hoping you'd pronounce that fellow's last name for I me. was going to touch it. <laughs> Koza Ki Kiewitz. Koza That's Kiewitz. why I talked about the previous play, Dave. There I you go. I didn't want to talk about it. Oh, and they called Doug Ranke for the foul that time and holding the defender off. And he, he was... To the dismay of Coach Dick Dominion there, he can't believe it. Koza Kiewitz will go back to the line for the <laughs> I, for the St. Francis Cougars, number 51. Big 6'4 junior out of South Bend, Indiana. Throws up a brick on the free throw. Doug Ranke out top. Nice feed inside to Sean Gibson. Good post-to-post -post action. 
Doug's actually played a pretty good ball game here tonight. Yes, Charlie. he has. Defending, block shots. Uh, <laughs> and Dissinger that time came up with the loose ball. Andre went right to the hoop that time. No hesitation. Drew the foul. About three players to pick to give that foul to. A newcomer into the lineup, Keith Manuel for St. Francis. The thing with Andre Walton, Dave, he has the quickness of just about anyone in that GOVC conference and any other team that the Mastodons will encounter this season. The big thing with uh, Andre Walton is his ability to hit the open outside jumper and the decisions that he makes on the uh, offensive fast break. And Andre has one free throw fall in. The other one drop back out. We have a violation that time when the Cougar player stepped inbounds but couldn't establish his position inbounds before he caught the ball. In court line violation. Sean Gibson. Out to Shane Gibson. Three pointer. Oh, it was down in about two, three times and popped back out. But he wanted to let Brother get a rebound. A Gibson to Gibson to Gibson play. That's teamwork. That's right. All in the family. Andre, good hustle that time. Tipped the ball away. Couldn't quite get it under control. That's a great step in by Walton that time, Dave. And that's actually two fouls that time on Brett Norris. The first time he held Walton, the second time he pushed him. Yeah. And I'm sure he's feeling in his own mind that uh, he was fouled. That's how the ball got loose. He's a little frustrated right now. He hasn't been able to get off like he usually does to, with that 21-point uh, average. Long jumper by Joe Mahuron that time. Falls short on the front of the rim. And the foul by number 45, Keith Manuel. Sean Gibson playing very well tonight as we see the St. Francis uh, coaches there. Both teams are in the bonus for the rest of the game. Six minutes and 33 seconds left on the time clock. IPFW in the lead, 85 to 50. And the free throw rolls around and drops off. Sean will be shooting for his 15th point. Didn't have the ball high enough in the air that time to give it a chance to fall in. Have we'll to get what, it up there. See what he does this time. A little more arch on the shot, and he's perfect. St. Francis will inbound the ball. Down court, Mike Bowen. Joe Mahuron out to Brett Norris. Cougars trying to get that half court offense set up, and that's their best uh, weapon, Brett Norris. Nice turnaround jumper off the glass. 14 points for Norris tonight, about seven points below his season average. There's still six minutes left, though. A little difficulty with the feed from the outside. Sean Gibson, though, comes right back, picks off the pass. Rich on the way up, feeds it back to Sean Gibson, who puts it up and in. Nice give and go and return that time with uh, Rich and Sean Gibson. Brett Norris with the outside jumper. And Brett, too, as good as he is, is not uh, the long jump shot threat, I don't think. Well, he's not really a jump shooter in any regards. Yeah. Good slasher to the basket, good strong inside player, though. Long three-point attempt by Rich. He rebounds his own shot. Great follow. Great follow, but he puts up then the rebound shot a little short. A little short and a lot to the left. <laughs> <laughs> In a game this uneventful, Dave, we're having uh, trouble. I know I am trying to find a dandy Don. Yeah, there's uh, there's been some good steady play, and we finally get that long outside jump shot. 
Keith Manuel, number 45, freshman, out of Bourbon, Indiana. Yeah, the playing time is going to be pretty well distributed. Uh, the honors uh, have also been probably pretty well distributed. I'm leaning towards Doug Ranke. I've criticized Doug, and I just want to get a chance uh, to just talk with him maybe about some of the things that may help his game and let him know that I'm not just up here criticizing him. I think I could agree with you, Charlie, because he has uh, played the kind of game where he has consistently been strong as he was there, although the ball got knocked out of bounds. Offensively, uh, after the very first entry into the game when he wasn't looking for the shot since that time, he's been, he's been to where he's been a threat. Doug's played a good ball game. That's 11 points right now uh, behind the scoring leader, Sean Gibson, 17 tonight. Andre Walton's played a good ball game. Yes, he has. Mark Allen with a spin. Couldn't get enough uh, on his balance to have the jump that was needed to get the ball back up. And the Cougars bring it down. Mike Bowen with the short jumper miss. Shane Gibson with a nice block on Brett Norris. I think the guys in the stripes uh, leave a little bit to be left desired <laughs> on both sides. Both teams have been barking you're, at the, at the referees all right. night. Although that last play, Shane had the ball. An alternate possession gives it back to St. Francis. Andre Walton out ahead of the pack. Let's see if he goes in with it, and he does. Modestly, he did not slam dunk. <laughs> now that's a good decision. When you're that far ahead of the pack, quickness. Yeah. Actually, it's not a decision. That's quickness. You can't teach that. Mark Allen tips the ball out of bounds. Three minutes and 34 seconds left in the action here. IPFW Athletic Center. Mastodons against crosstown rival St. Francis Cougars. Ball out front to Mike Bowen. Long jumper by number 45, Keith Manuel. Keith hit the three pointer. IPFW to inbound the ball. And we'll see if the action can stay continuous here in the last 3.30 uh, of the game. A lot of times you get down to three and a half minutes to go and there's lots of whistles, lots of stoppage in the action. Mark Allen, good hustle, puts it up once, missed, puts it up again. Mark probably wanted to foul, but he doesn't know that we just said, no, we don't want any more <laughs> fouls, keep this action going. Keep Dave, it continuous. I'm gonna go out on the limb and pick my dandy down. I am gonna go with Doug Ranke. And here we see Land Bullard come down for the breakaway, and he does put it away from the top side down. Great play by Andre Walton. Give that big man the reward for running the break, and plus get the crowd into it with the dunk. One of the first times this year we've been able to see uh, Land Bullard's uh, athleticism on a public display here tonight. Shane Gibson with the rebound. Out to Andre Walton. Andre quickly down the floor. Penetrates. Mark Allen with the ball over to Land. Land's going to try a three pointer this time. And he hits it. So he can do it from the top side down, or he can go clear out on the side and, and give you the, the rainbow shot and let it fall. Land's played well tonight. I think he's earned some more uh, playing time in his uh, basketball, this uh, IPFW Mastodon playing rotation. Yes, he has. Long outside jumper that time, a number 44 for the Cougars. Todd Galloway. Todd seeing about his first action tonight. I think, that, I think that's it for my pick as Dandy Don player of the game. Four. Five new people into the IPFW lineup with a minute and 48 seconds left here in the action. I already had Ranky for four. Well, now you're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fours are wild. 
Koza Kawitz misses the free throw. Now that I can say it, I like that name. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. now that you can say it. Whatever you can't do, you don't like it. <laughs> Second one up and good by Koza Kawitz. Substitution in as Bob Dissinger replaces Koza Kawitz. Pat Murphy to inbound the ball. Eric Vaughn receives the pass, brings it down. Now just about the only suspension this basketball game, Dave, is if the Dons will reach 100. Yes, and uh, there should be a good chance of that. Kevin Chank with the drive, misses the layup. The rebound that time by the big Dissinger kid, and he traveled because he couldn't keep his footing. Has to be kind of a disappointing evening for the St. Francis Cougars. On the other hand, they play hard, and there will be some teams that uh, they will give a lot of difficulty to. I think so. I've, I've never seen a quiet 100 points, but tonight, Dave. Yes, it would be. <laughs> pretty quiet 100 points. And we probably ought to take this opportunity too, Charlie, to indicate we haven't mentioned the name Jim Holstein tonight, but Jim is the longtime coach at St. Francis Cougars. He's a man that's coached a lot of basketball games, has won 419 games. That's a lot of W's. And it's a lot of time spent too on the court. And there we see Eric Vaughn with the drive to the basket. <laughs> That'll make it 99. He'll be the first guy to have the opportunity to go at the century mark. That was the park play. Eric Vaughn at his best. Around the back, the fake around the back pass. Back the other way, <laughs> switching hands. EV at his best. Like you said, they'll have a chance to try a lot of things here tonight. And I knew Eric would come up with something. One hundred on the nose. Eric Vaughn. Cash is in on the free throw. And we're under a minute now with the score IPFW 100, St. Francis 58. Pat Murphy with the rebound. Quick release up front. Three on one. Eric Vaughn, Kevin <laughs> Shank to the layup. The Eric Vaughn show. This kind of game is Eric's game. EV. And the fraternity guys across the way are uh, breaking into their chorus line. John Hansrider with the steal, and then he throws it away. 23 seconds, three, 23 more ticks on the clock, and this one will be history as the Mastodons are going to win game number 10 for the season. I think this and crowd, their record will go to 10 and three. The crowd now, Dave, just in anticipation what Eric Vaughn will do next. Yeah. Three pointer by again number 45, Keith Manuel, freshman. 6-3 forward from Bourbon, Indiana. Cougars almost had a steal. Five seconds left on the clock. IPFW looking to see perhaps one more shot. Kevin Shank will cut it loose from three-point land. And around and no good. So Kevin gave him a thrill. Well, Charlie, we have a final score, 102-61. Don's come up a winner tonight over St. Francis Cougars from Fort Wayne, Indiana. And I'll be joining uh, our Danny Don player of the game, and we've kind of decided that it is Doug Ranke, number 44. I a think that's a good game. selection. Good floor game. In this type of game, it's kind of hard to pick a Danny Don player of the game. Good game by Eric Vaughn. Uh, Land Bullard played well. Andre Walton Andre played well. Andre Walton had a good game. And everybody else uh, played hard out there. Uh, not with a lot of emotion, but it's one of those nights where it's probably hard to get a lot of emotion into the game. But they played hard and played uh, just very quietly, as we've said before. Accumulated 102 points. A quiet 102 points. And Dave, I'll let you recap the game as I go down to the floor for the Dandy Don interview. Okay. We'll go with some unofficial scoring here. And it looks like Sean Gibson will be the leading scorer for the game. 15 points and we can see a replay here of one of the slam dunk plays near the end of the game. I think probably Land Bullard. No, it's uh, Eric Vaughn on the layup driving layup where he switched hands and had a chance to really give us uh, the full shake on that move. 
Other scorers for the Mastodon, Doug Ranke, double figures tonight at 11 points. John Honstrider at eight, Pat Murphy at eight. A lot of good uh, production out of the inside guys. Land Bullard with seven points. Clarence Rich with 11. Eric Vaughn with seven. Dwayne Shears with seven. Mark Allen with six. Andre Walton with six. And we have Jeff Smithy with eight. Well, again, the final score here at the IPFW Athletic Center, 102-61, IPFW the winner over St. Francis Cougars. Next game Thursday night when IPFW will again be at home and will be playing Tri-State. We'll be right back with an interview of our Dandy Don player of the game right after this message. Yeah, we're two. Uh, body shop, 71st and 1st. Yeah, I know you love your commercial safety belts, right? That's where you're going, man. Oh. I tell her, Mrs. She loves you guys. She doesn't buckle up either. Oh, nobody's listening. You need anybody listening? Oh, the driver's part time. Really, you're not? It's just a little slow. Oh, no, no. Just put seat belts in my cab. Nobody uses them. Guess they feel safe with me. If we'd had half a brain, you'd have buckled up. Hey, bumper breath, I do have half a brain. You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your safety belt. We at IPFW are pleased to be able to bring you cable casts of NCAA athletic competition. We hope you've enjoyed the show and the excitement of intercollegiate sports from IPFW. To provide such programs, we need your support. With the help of many volunteers, we are able to produce these programs at a relatively low cost. Your contribution will help defray the production costs not covered by the Channel 6 budget. The College Cable Access Center invites you to invest in college quality programming by sending your contribution to the College Cable Access Center at IPFW, 2101 Coliseum Boulevard East, Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46805-1499. And we now join Charles Washington at the floor with the Danny Don of the player of the game. Doug Ranky. Right. Tonight, 102 to 61. A lot of key players played very well. Eric Vaughn played well. Andre Walton played well. A lot of players, you played extremely well on the defensive end, and Doug, I've criticized you sometimes on your offensive post moves, and that's one of the main reasons why I wanted to get you down here. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you are thinking when you are on the post. Well, a couple of games ago, uh, or quite a few games ago, coach told me I had to shoot every time I got caught in the, in the low post, so that's what I'm thinking when I catch the ball in the low post, that I have to shoot every time. Fortunately, they're going in. I'm uh, have a good percentage lately. So. You develop a good hook shot. I don't know if you've always had that in your repertoire, but in the last few games, I've seen you drop that hook shot with uh, a lot of consistency. Well, I, I got the uh, the hook shot way back in grade school. My dad taught it to me, and uh, and uh, it's going now. I can't. Why, why shoot something else? It's, on, it's an unstoppable shot. No one can block a hook shot, so why not shoot it? Good. I want to go back a little bit to a, probably a sore point for you as well as the rest of the Mastodon team. On Saturday night, a loss to Kentucky State. What types of things did Coach Piazza tell you? What types of in intensified things did he tell you to come into this game against a not so, I guess, recognized team as St. Francis? Well, it's St. Francis recognized us because they beat us last year. That was on our mind mainly, mainly time. We weren't thinking back to our loss. That's, we tried to put our losses out of, out of the picture and concentrate on our game. And tonight we were really concentrating on just and really winning big over St. Francis because they beat us last year. And that was our main concern. What type of, I guess, a team like St. Francis beating you last year, coming in this gym last year, winning the tournament, the first tournament of the game, didn't get a chance to play them. What, what was in your minds exactly? Getting beat by them? Well, uh, I was recruited by St. Francis, and uh, we really don't like to lose to a team, that, <laughs> you know. and. Uh, I, I, I kind of think that IPFW has a stronger basketball team. We're NCAA. I think NCAA is a little stronger than NIA. And uh, thus, I think uh, we should really, we should beat them every time. And it was a great disappointment last year to lose to them. So we really wanted to work hard tonight and beat them. Another player that I failed to mention earlier, Land Bullard, played a great game tonight. He did not see any minutes on Saturday. 
explain a little bit the connection between no minutes on um, Saturday night and significant minutes here tonight. Well, we all know how Lane can play. We all know he's, he's the best gifted athlete in, in the gym. And uh, you have to give people like that a chance. And uh, he really showed us what he can do tonight with the dunk and the three-pointer. He can do it from inside and out. Well, Jeff, continued success to you and the rest of the IPFW Mastodons in your quest for the GLVC championship and ultimately a tournament bid. Thank you. Here is the schedule of our live sports telecast in the coming weeks. IPFW women's and men's basketball doubleheader on Saturday, January 25th. At 6 p.m., Ashland University will play the IPFW Lady Dons. Then at 8 p.m., the men's teams from Ashland University and IPFW. Friday, January 31, at 8.30 p.m., we'll find the men's volleyball team competing in the Fort Wayne National Bank Pepsi-Cola Volleyball Invitational. At 8.30, IPFW will compete with Penn State. Then on Saturday, February 1, at 6 p.m., the consolation match of the tournament and the championship match will follow at approximately 8.30. We'd like to take this time to thank the Channel 6 volunteer crew and the Learning Resource Center at IPFW for their contributions to the live production of our basketball games this evening. The telecast of this IPFW sporting event is the sole property of the College Cable Access Center and IPFW. Unauthorized copying, retransmission, or rebroadcast of this event without expressed written consent is strictly prohibited. Don't forget to join us Saturday evening when Ashland University comes to the Mastodome. The women play at 6 and the men play at 8. And now we invite you to stay tuned to Channel 6 following tonight's telecast as we join the Spanish language programming from Univision Network already in progress. For Charlie Washington, this is Dave Skelton saying goodbye.